Hey wrestling fans, we are back with part four, and we have something special for you guys. Not only are we joined by Chronics of Most Extreme Wrestling, but we are also joined by Crystal. You want to say hi to everybody? Hi. <laughs> hey, got the job done, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so, uh, Crystal, we'll let you uh, we'll let you take the the take the helm at the uh, Big Show Cody Rhodes match. What are your thoughts on the uh, the overall match and the the build up towards the the match? Um, well, I really like Cody Rhodes. You know, once he got past being the Randy Orton duplicate there for a while, what you guys were saying, um, I really liked what he was doing. I didn't like the mask thing. So, I mean, once we've moved to recent events where he's kind of crazy and he's kind of different, I really kind of like him and I have a lot of faith in him. Um, as far as Big Show, I mean, I think he is just way past his prime and I don't like, I didn't like the storyline he was last in. So I'm not super excited about this match. But I am excited about the potential for Cody Rhodes to be put over because I think that's what's going to happen. What are your thoughts on also seeing the Intercontinental Championship defended at WrestleMania? I think that's kind of weird, but I mean... Against the big show. Yeah, I mean, that is really odd, so do you, I don't know. Do you think that Cody Rhodes would probably have been more suitable facing maybe his brother at... Uh, facing his brother at WrestleMania this year instead of big show like they originally wanted to plan? Definitely not. I just don't think that, I mean, this is just my personal opinion, I don't think that all that family crap really has a place to be on screen. Um, I don't know. It's just like... I would have liked seeing, I don't know. seeing Goldust because, you know, Goldust could have passed the torch. He was a good intercontinental champion himself, Goldust was. Yeah, but, but it wouldn't have even mattered because it's like, well, he's his brother. Of course he's going to pass the torch. Who cares? <laughs> I mean, but like we were talking about earlier, if we would have had Goldust in there, we would have been we would have been very upset because you got all these old guys coming up and taking out um, yeah True. you know people's time. Yeah, but at least he would have been oh, I yeah, think, at least he would have been putting somebody over. And it would have yeah. been fitting too because Goldust, like you said, contributed so much to the WWF, especially in the Federation uh, heavy gimmick era. You know, Goldust was one of the top guys in the mid card. He was a great intercontinental champion. I mean, the fight with Roddy Roddy Piper at WrestleMania 12. Gold, was it? Was it? Yeah, WrestleMania 12. I mean, Backlock Brawl. It, it was absolutely phenomenal. I mean, you never saw anything quite like that, in, at least in the WWF to that point. I mean, WCW was pushing the bar for several years at that point. But to see Goldust and uh, Cody Rhodes, I would have thought it would have been interesting, the brother versus brother. They were kind of teasing at it earlier in the year when we were right. seeing all those vignettes uh, with them backstage. Yes. But plans change. Big show, Cody Rhodes. The kind of, you know, just talk about what Crystal had to say. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I think Cody Rhodes' first character was interesting. The dashing guy, he was a little irritating, though. Them making him crazy, very interesting how they could change the character that quickly. Then to bounce right. back. Yeah. It was just that his, his bad gimmick just wasn't very serious, you know. It's hard to take mm -hmm. that one, like, really seriously, you know. But I did like it, though. Yeah, it was it was something different though. I mean, when have we seen anybody do something quite similar to that? And especially what Crystal had to say, uh, the way he's kind of crazy and kind of normal now, and how he just snaps in and out of these personalities. And for a few weeks there, he was almost a Randy Orton duplicate. He was even coming out with the uh, the whole bottle uh, the whole bottle of baby oil on him. Yeah, but yeah, that's I hate that. That is new. But to be <laughs> honest, at the end of the day, Cody Rhodes is as good of a technical wrestler as Randy Orton. If not, oh better. yeah, he's For he's sure. he's really good. And Randy Orton, he's always had pretty good mic skills. Don't get me wrong, but Randy Orton's never been stellar on the mic. Yes. he's always so been true. good enough to get by. He has the look and he has the charisma. And as long as you have two out of the three components, he made it by with the mic skills. Yes. And I think the same for Cody Rhodes. I think he's good enough on the mic. I think the wrestling ability is 100% sound. And I think he's, the, got the rest, he's got the look. Yeah. Uh, definitely, uh, you know, while we're on the subject of, the Rand, of Randy Orton, you know, uh, when you look back at Randy Orton's career with the WWE, you know, from Evolution, I mean, I picked, I, I did an unboxing a while back and I did the, I picked up Randy Orton, Evolution of a Predator. And the way that he carried himself through the uh, the evolution uh, uh, faction was the way he portrayed himself on camera, how he had that swag, how he had that cocky, the arrogance. He also was like that off camera, out backstage, you know, outside of the WWE, even with, you know, with that. So I think Randy Orton's biggest success in my mind 
was when he was with the Evolution and he was running it with the Intercontinental Championship. Well, I, yeah, but that 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 arrogant personality also makes it kind of a douchebag. He also too. got in a lot of trouble back in the day because of that personality. Yeah. But but the thing with Randy Orton is it doesn't really matter if his mic skills aren't as good as they used to be or or their Ingram stuff or anything like that because he draws money. True. And, exactly. and you know, people like Hulk Hogan. Well, well they don't really is. look so good in the ring sometimes. You know, yeah. Yeah. they may not have like chain wrestling ability, but the fact is, you draw money, you're, you're going to make it the WWE. Yeah. So I mean, I'm not against Randy Orton just because he does draw money and fans. I just personally am not a big fan. So. Oh, um, well, 100 percent agree. I have no issue with Randy Orton whatsoever, and it's actually nice to see Randy Orton wrestle sometimes because you actually get some technical wrestling versus a lot of the other matches that we see in WWE. Uh, Orton's not my favorite guy. I don't dislike him. Same with John Cena. I don't hate him. He's not my favorite guy. And I think uh, to further on what you said, Jason. I'll, I'll be honest. You love the Fruity Pebble. Be honest. <laughs> All right. So already in the, let's just make something clear. Already in this video, you've talked about Fruity Pebbles and Theodore's Law. Yeah, you're the one that brought it up. I had nothing to do with that one, boy. You said long only six <laughs> times in the same three sentences. I mean, it's kind of hard to shake. But, uh, you, you know. We'll move and now on. I totally forgot exactly yeah, what I was going to say. So we'll, with, on, with that note, we'll move on to the next uh, the next few that's happening. The uh, What, Chronix, Crystal, what are your thoughts on the current status of the Divas division in the WWE and with the possible uh, Beth Phoenix defending the, the Divas Championship against, at this point in time, we'll probably leave it as a mysterious opponent because we don't really know who she'll be, <laughs> who she will really be defending the title. Will we see Ma well, Maria Menounos come back? Or? Well, we'll let them answer that first, and then I've got some news that I caught wind of today. Okay, um, I really like Beth Phoenix, so I'm excited to see her, you know, getting some time and defending the championship. I think she's a good champion. Um, I just think. That the what what am I looking for? Like the randomness of the divas division, it just oh, bothers yeah. me because like like we said, we don't even know who our opponent would be because every week it's a new diva doing something completely different. Than yeah, and last we would week. we wouldn't even know who would be going in a WrestleMania match as a as a as a divas match if 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 she didn't have the championship yeah. on her. You know what I mean? Because and I mean, you know, she could lose it and then not go oh into my it. Gosh. You don't know. There's too much. I randomness. would have hoped it would have been Karma going in there, but it doesn't look like that. Yeah. I would. And, I, um, I would definitely have loved to have seen Karma. I mean, well, I was actually, very big on Awesome Kong. Yes. I would have been okay even with Eve going in there just because she's such a hated heel at this present moment. But please, sure. please, let's not leave the Hoski out of WrestleMania 28, please. <laughs> <The> Hoski. <laughs> um, to be honest, there's been a lot of talk uh, about either pairing her against either Natalia or Awesome Kong, but I actually found out something very sad about Awesome Kong. She unfortunately did not have her baby. She ended up miscarrying. Uh, very sad. I wish, you know, the best to her and her family. And yeah, I heard about that. It, it is really sad. And doesn't look, yeah, I have three little ones myself. So, you know, when you hear anybody, you know, their children and anything, especially as a father that, you know, I feel for them. And, you know, uh, I could also see her in a match against either Tamina Snuka, which they've been building a lot lately. Oh, that would have been awesome. That would have been phenomenal. My yeah, fourth. okay. I hate to interrupt you. No, but go I just for it. Go this. for it. All right. Is this okay? I'm going to interrupt you. It's, Look, it's all right. I, I, would, have, I would love to see, because they seem to have been building this up before, um, you could have Tamina and her dad versus Natalia and um, – Roddy Piper, or not not versus in a tag team, but as managers, because remember at the last pay-per-view you had Beth Phoenix coming out and they kept talking about Roddy Piper, Roddy Piper, her belt looks like Roddy Piper, and that would have been awesome. You know what would have been kind of cool? If they brought, maybe brought in Roddy Piper to team with Beth and then brought in the Anvil to team with Natalia. Yeah, and that would be. Well, well for, if you can get him out of jail. Yeah, he got arrested. Yeah. What was it, yesterday or the day before? Yeah, the and he, day got before. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, he got arrested. Yeah, he got arrested. It's just sad. It, it was another it, huge, We need to get a CM Punk intervention. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, or if Chris Jericho wants it his way, CM drunk. Oh, yeah, but, yeah, that'll work. But uh, it also, there's been a war of the words on Twitter between Alundra Blaze, well, Medusa, who wrestled in WWF as Alundra Blaze. She walked off with the WWF Women's Championship, and she so famously threw it in the trash can on Nitro. Yeah. And she and, still has the belt. And she still is in possession of the physical belt. But, They've been going back and forth. But the only thing about that is Alundra Blaze's stock is zero. Yeah. Most fans don't even know who she is. Yeah, I just asked Chronix who is that. 
I think <laughs> silently. I think so. the uh, you know I think like I was sitting back and I was thinking about it the other you know the other couple of weeks back. You know, not a lot of people. If they brought Alundra Blaze back, they would know who she was, like Crystal, like you just mentioned. And I think that had a lot of to do with the reasons why they inducted Sunny uh, last year, I believe it was at WrestleMania, was because yeah. she was still, you know, she was still young enough for the fans to remember. For all you fans out there that are not familiar with Alundra Blaze. Crystal, when you see this video, you can oh, tilt the book. God damn it! <laughs> My hands covering. You know what? <laughs> Whatever. I hand covered her face. But uh, you worth know, the <laughs> worth the strike. Epic fail at ten minutes. <laughs> well, this would probably be like forty. But uh, but guys, uh, we will be back with part five. Cinco, cinco. I think. Yeah, Cinco. All right. And the man's Hispanic. Yeah, I'm Hispanic, and I flunked it. Yeah, be right back.